MKBHD in the studio just updated their video intro for 2023. Ooh. And after seeing that, I decided to remake that intro completely in DaVinci Resolve. Boing. So this video will be a little different. I am not going to recreate this again from scratch. There is a lot of fine detail, a lot of pretty in the weeds or more just like time consuming steps. But instead, what I'm going to do is uh, leverage the power of the Fusion page and really how nodes work in the Fusion page to walk you through a lot of the big highlights of stuff going on behind the scenes. And if you don't know how that uh, works, I am here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. I have these sound effects that, hey, I am just gonna mute. I have this Fusion composition. I'm gonna click this button to load that into the Fusion page. And now we have our node tree. This is our whole scene. I know this can be overwhelming. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna walk through just about all of this. So let's get started. Especially when you are breaking down an existing effect, uh, the super important thing to know is how to uh, trace back to sort of the uh, root source or the root background. So all over the place, I have these merge nodes and we are gonna look at the yellow input for those merge nodes and sort of trace that back until we find the first merge in this chain and the first thing going into the background of that merge. I'm going to look at this background, press two to pull that up in our viewer, and we see, wow, it's just a transparent shape. And yes, I start a lot of my compositions just with a transparent background. This has a number of benefits. This will set your aspect ratio and resolution for the rest of your effect. And this helps you avoid any issues, especially if you are dealing with uh, live action footage or animations or anything else. If this was a video clip that ended at a certain time, because it's going into the first background node of my entire scene, then my uh, whole clip would just shut off when that video ended. But we can move forward, you know, one or two. Uh, merge nodes here and start to look at what we are building. And with that selected, the only thing in our frame is this little cube that comes up, rotates around, boom, and then just stays uh, there for the rest of our scene. Although, um, because of later things in our chain, we will cover this, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Cool, we're already doing some really, really cool stuff. This, of course, is just this 3D cube that is in the original video as well. So we have it popping up, rotating around, and then coming to a stop at a very specific angle. And the texturing or color on this cube is very interesting. On opposing sides, you can see as this rotates around, um, we have two black sides, two white sides, and then you only see one side, but theoretically, two sides with this texture. But even that isn't super simple. Look at this texture. The texture is disconnected from the cube. As a cube moves, the texture doesn't move. And on top of that, this texture is only updating, you know, every other or every like three, two, three frames. How did I do that? I will tell you. Um, we did this doing real, real 3D. If we look at this batch of nodes up here, um, we start with just a shape and it is just a 3D cube. And this, this is our cube. Now order of operations is very uh, important here. This 3D cube has transform controls. I am not using these transform controls to move um, what we see as the cube in our scene. This is completely static. And that is going into a merge 3D node. And then also in that merge 3D node, are all of these projectors. I'm not even previewing them yet, but if I, I mouse over them, you'll see their overlay and it gets wild pretty quick. But I'm gonna preview this next, Merge 3D. And wow, all of a sudden, this cube has those white sides, the black sides, and instead of a texture, it has this solid green side. Now, maybe there's someone, I mean, I'm sure there is, <laughs> but maybe there's someone out there um, much smarter than me, especially in the 3D parts of Fusion. I rarely do, you know, proper 3D in Fusion, but I wanted, uh, you know, different faces of this cube to be textured or colored differently. So to do that here, um, I used projectors. So let me find this green, cool. So here, I have in space this little projector and it's sort of like a camera. A camera will look in a certain direction. A projector will, you know, project a texture in a certain direction onto your 3D geometry. So on each side of this cube, I have a projector projecting the color I want to appear only on that side of the cube and then put it all together and you're sort of just left with a cube that is textured on specific sides. If this was a circle, things would get uh, very weird or a sphere, I guess it's called. <laughs> so all these nodes here um, are just texturing our cube. That's not so scary anymore, is it? Now this Merge 3D also has transform controls, but again, we're not messing with these here. We have a transform 3D next. And if I preview that, hey, 
this cube just pops up, rotates around, rests. And if we move to a one more merge, then we start to see, okay, here's that cube. And we even see our final camera we are using here. So now the cube just pops up, rests. Hello, editor Patrick here to talk about what is actually going on here because I did not explicitly spell it out. This transform 3D is not rotating the cube itself, but instead the entire 3D scene that is being piped into it. So even though the cube is static and the projectors are static, after that, that is being sort of combined into one scene on that Merge 3D and then the entire scene is being rotated. That's why all of this lighting or texturing stays in place. Now the motion of this cube was something that took me a little bit um, because I am not a great, you know, traditional animator, but here are our little easing curves for uh, all those positions of the cube. I had to go back um, to some early training I had done on this sort of motion. Maybe this is something I'll circle back to um, in a future video, just, you know, animation fundamentals, but the cube is being tossed up and coming back down. But even though um, it is resting super very, very momentarily at the top of that arch, that is not affecting the speed of the X axis movement or the rotation. So I have the keyframe sort of in the middle for the Y movement, but all the others, um, while they are eased, are continuous throughout this move. So I have that final merge connecting a 3D camera. Um, that 3D camera we are also using um, for some other stuff that we'll get to soon, it's, it's, but it's a lot like this. And then, hey, we have that coming just into a 3D render to get us back to a nice 2D image. Boom. Now remember that really cool texture we had? Uh, right now, that side is just green, but hey, it's green, we can just key it out. I believe I was working on this during a live stream and I believe it was Matt McCool who hopped in the chat and had this really, really great idea. I want a texture to only show up on this side of the cube, but I don't want the texture to be, you know, tied to that space in 3D. So I just created a little fast noise node with this texture doing its thing, changing every so often. That is piping into a stop motion node, so it's only updating every four frames. So I'm piping that renderer 3D into two different delta keyers. The first is only transparent where you want to see that texture, and the next is just getting rid of that green. So we can see I have that texture, I have it stop motion-y, and then we have this first you know, merge node of our scene. The green foreground element is that stop motion, but that merge is being masked by this first delta here. So it is only going to be coming through where this mask is transparent, just like that. Now, even as that moves, that is only the one face of the cube, but remember I have that second delta here that just removes the green, and then I'm just slapping that back on over it, and now we have our whole cube back. I know that's a pretty wild place to start, uh, but hey, we're walking through it bit by bit. Uh, luckily, the next thing we have um, shares a lot of similarities, and that is just this little cylinder over here. The cylinder pops up, rotates around, rests. And the process for that is, is almost identical. I have this cylinder in full 3D space, that is going into a merge. I have a lot of projectors here. This one was a little messier um, because I am shining white on the edges, but I have, you know, four different projectors to, you know, make sure I have coverage of this cylinder all around the edges with this really bright and vibrant green. I am animating that. That's going into the merge with our same camera. This one camera, I'm taking the output of that uh, and piping it into both of these merges for the 3D system. So even though they're completely separate, you can use the same camera for both of them. That again is being rendered. That again is being keyed out, keyed out. We have a different texture also just made during with fast noise going stop motion, key that. So now it's just the texture. And then out of that next Delta keyer, just like the first, uh, we are bringing that end cap in. And now for preview that merge, we have both elements in frame, block, cylinder, Boom. Hey, you know what I said about uh, the, the root background node? Um, what I said was right, but I also found the wrong one in my scene. We are connecting these elements that is just going into uh, a, a blank merge node. I don't know why I did that, but that's going into this next merge node as a foreground element. So now, let, let me see what I did, yeah. So if we look at the background input of that merge, you can see we're already adding a lot more uh, onto this scene, but if we go back, um, we have a merge adding some text, a merge adding all these elements over here that again, I will go over and then a final background here. This background is not transparent. Um, we have a nice gradient we have selected here with just, you know, a few shades of gray between the two. And from here, we can sort of um, look at the elements we are adding um, before this merge that brings in our full 3D textured elements. The first one 
is this merge that adds these really uh, bright and vibrant shapes. We can look at the mini node tree that brings us that. And you can see this also goes back to the real 3D system. We have a box that is set to a wireframe in our 3D controls. And we have a pyramid. That's cool. We have uh, transform nodes for each of those movements in scene. You see just tossing up, rotating around. We have renderers for those. Now look at this, we have render 3D nodes. I'm not sure how this is even gonna come through in the video, but it's so hard to see these because we are just rendering out the wireframe. And inside the 3D system, these wireframes have, have no width. No matter what wire settings you change, they are just like a pixel. But um, a nifty trick, if you ever want to export wireframes, after your renderer 3D, you can just add a glow node pull the glow size down a lot and the glow up and then boom you got nice chunky wireframes i'm piping each of those into a bitmap so we get proper mask data for that and then i can start actually combining the bitmaps so now we have mask data of that cube that does move and the triangle now we also had this little circle here as well. Uh, this doesn't need to be full 3D. It is just a circle moving through our scene. So now we're doing some really cool stuff. We have full 3D that we've made 2D. We've buffed up the wireframes. We've turned that into mask data and we are just piping these into the mask inputs for one another. So we have those two bitmaps uh, being added on just to a normal ellipse mask for this last one onto one master background that is that color. Boom. So all these elements are just masks on one solid. That's being piped right over that cool gray gradient. And then over that, we have just some simple text to let you know I am not MKBHD. <laughs> this is basic text. The only thing going on is that I have pulled up the tracking a little bit just to make it look a little cool. And then finally, we have that merge bringing back in those 3D elements. Boing. Okay, that is part one. <laughs> and if we look at this merge node, then that plays through, those elements come up, come to a stop, and then they just hold there for the rest of our composition. But obviously, we move on from that in the composition, so what's happening? Like I talked about earlier, whenever we add elements, um, the background in all our merges is still important. So there's no reason really to like cut this off or go in and change our global out settings um, when we can just you know put something else completely over it. And you'll see that when this comes down, the you know main cube sort of hits right here. And if we go one node further to this dissolve node, you see, wow, uh, when that hits, we just cut away functionally to our next scene. And that cut is happening on this next node, a dissolve node, where a merge node takes a background and puts a foreground over that. And you can you know use uh, the operator and apply mode and all of that. The dissolve node uh, does have an operator, mostly like different types, types of dissolves. And it has the slider saying, hey, do you want to show the background or the foreground? So we have everything coming into the background. Uh, so that is at zero. And then at a certain frame, we just boom, cut um, to everything coming into the foreground. You can see this is set to foreground with a value of one. So what's coming into the foreground? Well, our entire next scene. Now there is a number of pretty wild things happening in this scene. You can see one, it cuts away. Um, that box is replaced by just an outline of that box and then the different lines of that box move around into the MKBHD logo um, before, you know, spoiler alert, as you saw earlier, that uh, cuts away as well. Oh, on further nodes. So this, once it moves, it also just stays in that exact location for the rest of our scene. Now, what is happening? Um, there is one thing that took me a while to figure out that, you know, I'm just gonna uh, tell you. Um, if we go back, follow our merge nodes back, we end up with this background node, that again is transparent. This is just something, this is just an area we're building on. Um, and if we move one node forward, we have a merge and we can see, hey, onto that, we have this grid. Now, if we go back and look at just the grid coming into the foreground, uh, we're no longer dealing with a typical 16 by nine aspect ratio. Here we have a perfect square and that was to solve one specific problem. You can see um, before that I have this black solid, we add the grid over that. And on that grid, the only thing I am doing is setting this rotate to a value of 45 degrees. So it is not, you know, straight boxes, they are all at that 45 degree angle. And that is actually why it was important that this was a square. When I had this first background be just a normal 1080 by 1920, when I added the grid and then rotated it, all the squares were slightly um, 
off square. <laughs> it set the aspect ratio of the individual squares um, based on the aspect ratio um, of the solid that the effect was applied on. I wanted all these to be perfectly uniform. So I had to make this a square, add the grid. And at that point, you know, I had things the way I wanted so I could merge that back over um, this transparent um, to sort of crop that back into our normal 1920 by 1080. Coming out of that, I have a transform that I have unchecked the size and aspect on. So now we have this entire thing stretched horizontally to give us this you know, unique grid look. Sort of an isometric view, except you know, um, all of the squares are perfectly uniform. The ones down here aren't actually like closer to our virtual camera. And then I have an erode dilate to sort of thin those out just a little bit. Now here is the wild thing. And if we look, that's going into a background, that's going into a merge with this box. And in the foreground, we have just the box and we have a whole bunch of polygon masks. And these masks, if I look at all of them, you can see um, the, oops. <laughs> And if I look at these, you can see sort of where they go. So this was a whole lot of the manual work that I won't walk through step by step now. But you can see in this main animation, it starts as a box, all these lines shift around to make the MKBHD logo. So um, this is not something I like figured out. This I straight up almost frame by frame um, copied from the actual intro. I'm sure I did some of the in the weeds things slightly different than they did, but you can see it looks like some lines move, shift around, shrink, and then grow out of places. So I just went and thought, okay, if this line needs to come here, where's it coming from? Where's it going to? And a lot of the individual movement, look at this first polygon node, it starts here and then just slides down that path that is accomplished on this position and length sliders. So even though this is the entire path of the polygon, I've pulled down the length so that it is only visible on part of that path at a time and then positioned it along that path with this position variable. And this is a little harder to view because of how it treats masks. It sort of like adds them on top of each other. But you can see if I just click on any of them, you see all these different paths. And as I start previewing through all of them, they get added on top of each other until they get added onto the background node. And we actually go from a box to logo for, you know, just like barely 20 frames. It was a lot of work, <laughs> but totally sells it. That gets merged over. And of course, this is a big part of it. I had those shapes, um, but a lot of these lines perfectly move along this grid as well. I tried doing this um, with an improper version of this grid at first. That was another headache. But with this uh, snifty grid fix we did way over here, all these lines perfectly line up, feel really great, Whew. come logo, and boom, that gets us back to our dissolve node. Oh, the only thing happening here is that I have an extra transform with a little bit of just sliding it down a little bit. Um, importantly, to match um, this, this block coming down. So the block is moving down, and then that correlates to uh, the entire next scene also moving down. So it comes down, whew, whew. it sort of carries over the motion, even though what is there visually has completely changed. The final element here, um, much quicker. Um, we have another dissolve node where you can see the keyframes for that. So it, even if we preview that, it's the previous frame, then it gets to this, boom, cuts to the logo, slides back, fades out. Whew. Let's check out the entire thing again. I almost just redid my own sound effects, even though I made main sound effects here. Boing. <laughs> Whoo, if that took a long time to explain, you can imagine it took a long time to make. <laughs> now I have to say, the studio did a great video walking through their process, but again, they walked through the entire process. It's much easier to look at something and recreate it bit for bit, um, instead of going through the real hard actual design work of you know ideating, coming up with ideas, figuring out what works together, figuring out you know textures and colors. So of course, uh, unbelievable, massive props um, to that whole team who actually did this work. I just sort of like ripped it off. <laughs> but I do think this is a pretty great testament to what can be done in DaVinci Resolve. And here's something wild. When we get the full release of Fusion, on uh, the iPad with DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. Um, nothing I'm doing in this scene is that 
far out there, something like this could be made completely on an iPad. Maybe I'll circle back when that actually does happen. Hopefully, if you're in Fusion yourself, there was some, you know, uh, small things going on here and there was some value walking through that. Um, if all of this was overwhelming and above your head, that's cool too. Um, this can also just be a cool demonstration of stuff that can, you can do in the Fusion page because not a lot of people are doing this sort of work in the Fusion page of Resolve. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.